All right, real quickly here, I want to go over uh, some of these comments and do a, like, a follow-up on the Mark of the Beast. Yeah, first of all, let me go through the comments and just see where this goes, okay? So Roderick, he says, Revelation 20, 5, 6, does speak of millennial reign, but isn't what many think. Those events seem to have happened long ago, when Popery was in power over nations, all that swearing an oath to Rome, Mark, to do church commerce. Also, on the politics, you're correct in that worshiping is the same as the Queen of Heaven mentioned in Scripture. People chose government over God. Okay. So, Roderick desperately wants to believe the preterist view on the Bible. And it seems to me that there are more preterists watching and commenting than futurists. So, futurists are those that believe the mark of the beast is coming in the future. That essentially nothing in the Bible or nothing in the book of Revelation is happening it's all in the future and then the preterists have the opposite view everything's already happened so they're both saying don't read the book of revelation i don't understand it so i'll just pass it off as it's it's going to happen in the future or it's already happened it doesn't matter and my <laughs> contention very strong contention is that it's happening right now you just have to have the veil lifted up over your eyes so that you can see and apply to what is being said in the book of Revelation to what's happening in the world today. Now, uh, in this video here, what is the mark of the beast? I talk about um, how this is a spiritual mark. And so let me sort of expound or elaborate on that just a little bit. Um, just to give you like sort of a visual, if you will. So if we go to Revelation 17, and verse 5, it's talking about the great whore, which is the beast of Revelation, which is the fourth beast of Daniel. And the fourth beast is the Roman Empire. Now, this great whore represents the, um, the spiritual empire. So there was a beast that was and is not and yet is. The beast that was was the physical empire and then the beast that is is the spiritual empire they're both from the same they're both of the same and then they they're both spiritually Babylon all right they're two but they're one all right so uh, both a physical and a, and a spiritual and so essentially um, you know you got Caesar who was God of this earth or so he thought and then Jesus come and uh, showed himself that Jesus is God of heaven and earth. And so Caesar can't beat that, but he can pretend to take his place. So that's how this all came about, in my opinion. All right, so here in verse 5 it says, talking about the great whore, Upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. So if you take this literal, okay, so if you believe that there's going to be a microchip in your right hand or a microchip in your forehead, then so also do you have to believe that there's going to be a woman who's going to appear and that's going to have these words on her forehead. And upon her forehead was a name written. It, th I mean, this is kind of like um, the Omen movie from back in the 70s or whatever it was, where the the kid had a he was born with a 666 tattoo on his on the top of his head. You you move you part his hair and you could see the tattoo. And of course, uh, you know, there's your Antichrist. It's the same Hollywood fantasy mentality. Um, that you know a lot of people want to believe because 
Uh, it, to me, it seems like people want to believe anything but the simple truth. Now, to give you a visual, yeah, I put together. Now, I had to do. I don't want to do this live because, look, I type in. Where is that at? I type in horror of Babylon. God knows what I'm going to get. So here we go. Here's a lady with. I don't know what that is. That Chinese or something? And then here's another one. You can't really see it. I, I blew it up so you could see a little bit better. You still can't read the words. But that's what it, that's what she would look like, right? Just some woman that's going to show up someday in the future, apparently. Or if you ask Roderick, she was already here. Nobody was able to get a picture of her. And and then here I made this one right here. The close up of her forehead. All right, so this is what we're looking at. All right, so you're not this is not going to happen. It hasn't happened. It's not going to happen in the future. It's not happening right now. This is speaking spiritually. It's the book of Revelation. It's a spiritual book. It's only meant for those that are saved, that have the Spirit of God in them. It's only meant for them to see it. The unsaved will never see it. They cannot see it because they're blind. Okay. So let's go to this other comment here. Guy Osment. The Mark of the Beast is mentioned in Revelation 13. <clears throat> but Revelation 13 was totally fulfilled in the first century. Preterist. Therefore, there is nothing in this chapter that has any direct relevance to the 21st century or beyond. Don't read the book of Revelation. It just does us no good at all. Just ignore it. Pretend like it, but it shouldn't even be in the Bible. Right? Uh, completely worthless. Totally irrelevant. And don't even bother looking at it. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that is uh, either completely wicked um, or I mean, <laughs> try to be soft here it's ignorant all right extremely ignorant now if you wipe the snot off your nose and you actually read the Bible and you read the book of Revelation there is absolutely a direct relation to what's going on in the world today and it's not only what's going on in the world today but what's going to happen and there are many pictures being painted in the book of Revelation to give us a better understanding of the world that we're in and the world that is to come to totally pass it off is absolutely deceptive, wicked, and at the very least, ignorant. I wanted to use a little bit stronger word than ignorant, but I gotta, I gotta be nice, man, because I was once there. I was once, you know, didn't believe the Bible, and apparently that's where this guy is. Doesn't believe the Bible at all. I, I was there. I used to believe I was a super monkey. And that um, Superman and Spider-Man was going to come down out of, from planet Kryptonite or whatever and come save us all. Alright, Russell Shand. We reign with Jesus for a thousand years. Revelation 20, verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Right, so this is a vision of something that he's seeing that that angel of God is showing John, right? <clears throat> and very simply this thousand year period is a very unique time period from the time of baby Jesus to the time of his return it's a limited period of time it's a 
period of time that was not like it was before baby Jesus. Was not like it. Was not like this right now. Where we can be born of God, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, read the words of, of God uh, from, you know, the words of Jesus, and so on. The new covenant, the better testament. And now, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, we will be lifted up. We will be changed in the twinkling of an eye and then he's Jesus makes all things new so that period of time after his return is not the same as the period of this period of time that we're in now so that's why it's called a thousand years and then when Satan is loosed it tells us exactly why in Revelation 20 why, what this purpose is and the purpose of loosing Satan at the end of the thousand years is to gather together the unsaved and fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all this goes back to Revelation or I'm sorry to Genesis 3 uh, this way I will put enmity between thee and the woman between thy seed and her seed it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel talking to the serpent and the heel that's going to be bruised is Jesus he's going to stomp out wickedness all wickedness forever all right so when Satan's gathering together the unsaved this is the enemy being gathered at our feet all right he's and that goes back to what I just showed you and then uh, you know I like to I don't see people talking about this but they should it's like behold I will make them of the synagogue of Satan which say they are Jews and are not but do lie Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Not them, but those of us that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now think about this. I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. That's exactly what we're reading here in Revelation 20 when Satan gathers together the unsaved and exactly what we read in Genesis 3 and all you have to do is put the pieces of the puzzle together all you have to do is connect the dots it's very simple all right and of course it all starts with faith you got to have faith it's always been about faith and once you have faith then your eyes are opened all right and since we're since I mentioned it, let me show you something here. Second Corinthians 3, verse 15, But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. So when you turn to the Lord, that means you have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The veil is taken away. Your eyes are open. And now you're able to see these things. All right. So it's it's always a it's always been about faith. Always been about faith. So thanks, Russell, for that. <clears throat> Truth sets you free. Good video, brother. Interesting to see that mark, number, and image are about the same thing. I also deleted one of my videos because I see it. I see now it is not consistent with the Bible. Who is the great whore? Is it referring to the Jews who commit spiritual adultery? Uh, no, it's not. Um, so, 
Uh, yeah, I probably should do another video, but if I could, if I could real quickly explain it very simply. Um, now, there's Karen. Karen's got some crazy comments I want to get to, but so let me make this real simple, the easy version. All right, so in Daniel, this is where the whole thing gets set up. Daniel tells us about four kings about four beasts until the end of the world alright Daniel tells us about four beasts until the end of the world and the first beast is the king of Babylon the king and his kingdom alright that's what a beast is and these great beasts which are four are four kings which shall arise out of the earth the first he mentions he mentions by name the first three of the four beasts all right, after the fourth beast, it's the end of the world. All right, so when Jesus comes, he's going to destroy them all. So the four beasts are mentioned by Daniel. He names the first three. Babylon is the first one. And the Medes and the Persians are the second one. And the Greek Empire is the third one. Now we know that um, the Greek Empire was no longer... In uh, power during the time of baby Jesus right and so who was in power in the time Jesus was born and it was Caesar Augustus and who is Caesar Augustus he is the Roman Empire or the Roman Emperor excuse me he had power authority to tax the whole world and it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. All right. So the, at that time, it was the Roman Empire, the fourth beast. There cannot, there cannot be any other possibility. The Greek Empire had crumbled. The Roman Empire took over. The Roman Empire is the fourth beast. Should be no doubt about it. So we go to Revelation. The Every mention of, of beast in the book of Revelation is this fourth beast of Daniel, and it is the Roman Empire. Now, go back to Revelation 17, if that's possible. And we see, there it is. Right, so, Revelation 17, verse 8 Behold, the beast that was the Roman Empire and is not the Roman Empire is no longer uh, it's the physical empire is no longer uh, set up the way it was right and it says the beast that was and is not and yet is right? and so it went from a physical empire to a spiritual empire and then of course when you read and understand that the whore of Babylon is in the spirit of the first beast which was the king of Babylon and all the beasts all four beasts are in the spirit of Babylon so fourth beast also being in the spirit of Babylon having power over all the kings of the earth and the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth now think about this. Um, in the very first verse of Revelation 17, it says, There came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sits upon many waters. Okay. So we go down here. We can do it this way. See waters there. The waters here in verse 15, and he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest where the whore sits are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. There's only one organization that fits all that, and that is it's not a physical empire, it is a spiritual empire, and it's the Roman. Not the Roman Empire, but the Roman Catholic Church, right? They have churches all over the world, 
among all the people, all the multitudes, all every nation, and in every language. They claim over one billion people associated with the Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic Church. Now, of course, if everybody knew this, the Roman Catholic Church, the Pope specifically, would not have the power that he has or the influence that he has. But uh, people that are old, older like me, I see the difference from what it used to be 40 years ago to what it is now. And there's more acceptance of uh, the Roman Catholic Church or Catholics in general. People, it, to me, it's insane that people would consider Catholics to be Christian. They're there very well could be Christians within I mean there has to be Christians in the Catholic Church but the Roman Catholic Church is not Christian at all there's no support for the Roman Catholic Church now so I'm getting too far into this there's no support in the Bible for there to be a Pope none whatsoever and their whole organization is built on one verse in the Bible. It's Matthew 16, when Jesus asked his disciples, Whom do men say that I am? And, um, you know, uh, some say you're John the Baptist, some say Elias, some Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. This is what the church is built on. It's not built on Peter. Peter was just a man like you and me. All right, so, people, so the Roman, the deceivers want to say, Oh, no, it's not built on Jesus Christ. It's built on Peter. Well, you think about this a little bit. Just a few verses later, Jesus turns to Peter and says, Get thee behind me, Satan. So if the church is built on Peter, then it can only be built on Satan. Alright. It's not so, but it's not, right? The church is built on the fact that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. God. Alright. And we can go to the book. Oops. Go to the book of Acts, I think. No, no, no. First Corinthians. Ten. And did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. Alright, so the church is built on the fact that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the Living. God okay so I could go on and on about this but uh, you know long answer short short answer long it the Roman Catholic Church is where are we at here is the great whore all right they are the Roman Empire not a physical empire but they are a spiritual empire all right so this, and the reason why it's called the whore and not the wife is because the the whore or the prostitute is a um, woman that takes place of the wife right so it's like a substitute wife if you will and she's dirty and filthy and she's not the wife but she pretends to be and she plays out as though she was the wife but she is not the wife that's why it's called the great whore all right and the mother of harlots all right, so the mother of harlots would mean she has daughters that are also prostitutes or whores, if you will. They're harlots, right? So they're false churches. So there's the rum, the mother church, and they call themselves the mother church, and then uh, all these other religions. In my very strong opinion, stem from the decept the deceptions that come out of the Roman. Catholic Church. So anyways, 
there should be no doubt about it. It took me a while to figure it out so I get it. People don't see it. But if they're being led by the truth, they're going to eventually see it. And at the end of the world, it's all going to play out. So if you don't know now, you'll know later. All right. Karen AP. I do believe Satan has been loosed. And we are to pray it through and help as much as we can. Um, when Satan is loose, there's going to be no, uh, in accordance with Revelation 20, there's going to be no doubt about it. We're going to be lifted up in the air, and Satan is going to gather together the unsaved. There's not going to be any question what's going on. All right, thank you, Jay. I get it now. We reign with, oh man, it's amazing. Jesus reigns at all times. That's right. He reigns at all times. He's from everlasting to everlasting. He is, he was, and is. I mean, come on, man. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Oh. I'm getting fired up now. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Jesus Christ is from everlasting. To suggest that he's going to reign a thousand years and then that's it. Sorry, fellas. I couldn't give you, couldn't give you everlasting life. This is the best I can give you. It's like... <laughs> It's ridiculous. I, I, I honestly don't. I don't think people are thinking it through. They want to believe this zombie eclipse of either people, you're either you're reigning over zombies or you know zombies are running around or I, it, you know what? It does not make any sense at all. Jesus Christ reigns forever, and again, we are in the special time period. It's, we're not going to always be experiencing death and sin and sorrow and all that sort of stuff. Alright, so thank you for that. And um, Today, I think I read this one yesterday, didn't I? Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. I will try to get my thoughts this weekend. Yes, doing word studies is exactly what I did when studying this topic. I will... But, oh yeah, I did. So I went to this guy's channel. I subbed him. Curious of his thoughts. And I would encourage you all to share your thoughts either in the comment section or, uh, you know, just make a video. Tell me about it. I'll watch it. Um, don't try not to be long winded like me. Man, I'm bad about that stuff. 